the joint Kenya-Uganda cross-border program for sustainable peace and socio-economic transformation of the Karamoja cluster that will be launched on Tuesday, 12 September 2019 in Moroto district. The program covering Turkana and West Pokot in Kenya and Karamoja in Uganda will be jointly launched by His Excellency President Uhuru Kenyatta of the Republic of Kenya and His Excellency President Yoweri Museveni of the Republic of Uganda. The quality of life of the Karamoja cluster has been affected by increasingly frequent droughts, underdevelopment, and isolation. Their traditional nomadic nature has, been, has made adaptation difficult. Their shared identity presents a great opportunity to define indigenous approaches to development and prosperity. The United Nations support to this cross-border joint program is part of a global commitment to support governments to put people and planet first. The joint program enables us to respond to national visions of both countries, the East African Vision 2030, and the aspirations of the African Union Agenda 2063. This is the second phase of a community-informed joint program which began with a memorandum of understanding between Kenya and Ethiopia. This approach is innovative as it also allows us to address economic and social and development issues while involving elders, community leaders, private sector, local government and national governments. In the spirit of UN reform, which puts the 2030 agenda and the Sustainable Development Goals, SDGs, at the center of all our work, the UN Development Program, UNDP, facilitated initial consultations as a catalyst enabling joint government and UN teams to consult, plan, and develop both the MOU as well as the joint program. This time-sensitive support has provided a strong foundation for the UN resident coordinators in Kenya and Uganda to mobilize the UN country teams, including our UN area coordinators in the region to respond. In October last year, the UN country team in Uganda hosted their counterparts from Kenya to discuss the programming and agree on a division of labor. The, particip the participating UN agencies in Uganda so far are Food and Agriculture Organization, FAO, International Organization for Migration, IOM, the Joint UN Program on HIV AIDS, UNAIDS, UN Capital Development Fund, UNCDF, UN Development Program, UNDP, UN Entity for Gender Equality and the Empowerment of Women, UN Women, and World Food Program, WFP. It is likely that as the program is implemented, more UN agencies will provide their support on their areas of expertise. This cross-border program is an opportunity for current and new partners to join this effort to address matters of peace, humanitarian work, and development opportunities in this region. The United Nations Secretary General, Mr. Antonio Guterres, supports this initiative and welcomes it as a good example of promoting the attainment of the 2030 Agenda and the SDGs, particularly SDG 16, Peace, Justice, and Strong Institutions, and SDG 17, Partnership for Goals. On this joint journey uh, towards the signing of the Memorandum of Understanding between the two governments, and indeed the Uganda and Kenya cross-border integrated program for sustainable peace and socio-economic transformation for the Karamoja cluster. I also wanted to acknowledge the work of the UN family uh, in working together with UNDP on this. Uganda and Kenya are on the verge of making history. Through the signing of the MOU and this innovative cross-border initiative, the history is premised on the connection between the two countries. The Karamojong of Uganda, the West Pokot of Kenya, and the Turkana of Kenya a history of common languages, a history of common descent, a history of common way of living, even as pastoralists. And this initiative really does three things for us. 
First, to cement that history and to consolidate the gains that the two countries have been working on over the years. This initiative also seeks to address the common challenges between the two countries. We know the, current, uh, the, the, the challenges of the region, drought, climate change, illiteracy, conflicts, name it. But importantly, what this initiative does is about opportunities. This is a very resource-rich region. The potential for tourism, the potential for many things are there. And this allows us to leverage those opportunities. Honorable Minister, ladies and gentlemen, as the United Nations Development Program, UNDP is mandated to support countries such as Uganda and Kenya to eradicate poverty, to promote structural transformation that lead to their development goals to support the countries to be really resilient to shocks and crises. And we feel very strongly that our support to this initiative is one of those that we have demonstrated the role of UNDP. In 2018, last year, the UN Secretary General and indeed the UN General Assembly gave us a new role. And that role is to play the role of an integrator within the UN system. Now, what does it mean? as an integrator. And again, I'm going to unpack it in terms of what UNDP has been supporting. First, we provide the seed money to support the foundational work that Honorable Minister talked about, about a million dollars, that's about 3.7 uh, billion Uganda shillings uh, to support this work. The second thing that we have been doing is to create a platform indeed for various agencies in the UN to come together. So that integrator role, I want to say, can be seen within the eyes of what I call the four eyes. The first is that UNDP has been supporting integrated approaches to the sustainable development goals. In other words, in Karamoja, we need to work together, the SDGs in agriculture, in energy, in poverty reduction, everything needs to come together. And most importantly, issues to do with the humanitarian development and peace nexus in an area such as the Karamoja cluster, it's very important. But importantly, in together as a UN family on a cross-border program, and what that cross-border program does indeed is to bring that integration together. In other words, we have various aspects of the UN family working together in an integrated way. The second I is on innovative approaches. We have worked together with UN agencies to promote innovative approaches to address very complex development challenges. This will be the first time that the UN family, together with Kenya and Uganda, are working together on an initiative of this, of this nature. The second innovation is that we are drawing on the collective strength of the UN, our competences, our comparative advantages, our complementarity, in bringing the innovations in, from the various organizations and agencies to support us. The third I is the interconnections that we bring amongst our programs. As UNDP, for example, we do have about six programs and in the Karamoja uh, cluster. Here in Uganda, we do have the ACP EU Development Minerals Program, Food Security Program, Kidepo Critical Landscape Program, the SDG 16 audit, we are working with a number of agencies here on the spotlight initiatives and name it. And again, this I, which talks about the interconnections is very important because this program is not a standalone. It needs to build on what is existing, it needs to consolidate what is existing, and it needs to foster programmatic in linkages amongst existing programs. And finally, the fourth I, as UNDP, we are supporting the United Nations development system reforms. And that reforms, which the General Assembly passed last year, is a reform to position the UN to be able to deliver compelling, robust services to partner countries. And we are glad as UNDP, we are part of that conversation. <laughs> Honorable Minister, let me conclude by pledging UNDP's continued support to this program. We believe this is going to be a life-changing program for the Karamoja region to deliver the promise of sustainable development goals in many ways. As I conclude, I would like to use this opportunity
to bring greetings from the United Nations Development Program Administrator, Mr. Kim Steiner, and the UNDP Assistant Secretary General and Director of the UNDP Regional Office for Africa, Ms. Ahuna Eziakonwa, who also was a resident coordinator and representative here in Uganda a couple of years ago. And through her personal, give this million dollars to support this initiative. Once again, I would like to thank you for the opportunity to support this. As UNDP, we stand ready to continue working with you on this very novel program. Uh, as you know, the UN, one of the key things that we have been underscoring is the financing for development uh, and, and, and the financing for the Sustainable Development Goals. And uh, as we speak now in a few weeks, uh, there will be a meeting in New York on the uh, at the General Assembly focusing again on the issues of financing. So how do we bring this home to Uganda? In the case of this particular program, there are three or four things that uh, we would do. First, as UN agencies, and you can see the numbers here, we are going to integrate some of these things into our own programming processes. Uh, uh, every four years or five years, we do have country programs that we develop with the government. So we're going to integrate that and make sure that elements of this program are part and parcel of our programs. The second thing that we're also going to explore is a joint program. In other words, now that we have the MOU, how do we support the government more practically? Uh, so the potential for a joint program is there for us to also uh, explore and take it forward. The third thing is to really work very strongly uh, and robustly with uh, different stakeholders, including the private sector, and to see how the private sector can join hands uh, with the government and with the UN uh, to be able to advance this program. And uh, very often the UN also, again, we, ha we are a partnership broker, and one of the things that we can bring certainly is to this. And then finally, I would say we had very spirited debates over the past uh, three, four weeks on the National Development Plan 3. And one of the things we talked about during the NDP 3 uh, policy series is a question of financing. And we have uh, very identified very interesting financing sources, not only uh, domestic, but also uh, external sources that we can potentially uh, including diaspora financing, for example, uh, which we can explore. So again, I think uh, the landscape is available and we look forward to, to working with you all in terms of uh, budgets and financing for the program. On the issue of the FGM, uh, this is a very crucial one and we do have agencies like the UN Women uh, who are focusing on some of these things and again, the UN will be partnering with the two governments to address issues of this nature. Uh, and finally, on the issue of integration, I just wanted to look at it in a different dimension. As you know, uh, Africa is at a very critical point now where we do have the Africa Free Trade Continental Area Agreement. I think, um, Honorable, as you said, maybe those, the Karamoja cluster perhaps know how to do it best. Yeah. And I think that integration from even a trade point of view, it will be very, very interesting for us to watch and to support uh, and to bring really to fruition this dream of Africa to be able to connect trade amongst ourselves. So I thought I would just add a few points uh, to your point, Honorable Minister. Thank you very much. This is between the government of Kenya and the government of Uganda in support of Kenya. Now, in Kenya, in brackets, that is Turkana and West Pokots, Uganda, and that is Karamoja, cross-border program for, for sustainable peace and development. The purpose of the MOU and the cross-border program. The purpose of the Kenya-Uganda cross-border program is to enhance the Karamoja cluster to reduce resource-based conflicts. That is cattle wrestling, the spillover effects of conflicts, and improve the livelihood of the communities of the Karamoja cluster through cross-border trade, sustainable resource management, and introduction of alternative livelihoods. The cross-border program for sustainable peace and development will focus on Turkana, West Pokot of Kenya, and the Karamoja. Though the Karamoja cluster covers the Turkana and the Pokots of Kenya, the Karamajong of Uganda, the Toposa from South Sudan, the Dasanach, and the Nyangatom from West Ethiopia. Ugandans are aware about the development interventions made to address challenges in Karamoja under the NRM government. Key among these are the comprehensive disarmament program, which was launched in 2001, 
that recovered over 40,000 illegal guns. Thereafter, the affirmative action started under the Karamoja Integrated Disarmament and Development Program in 2011 to 2015. And the second Karamoja Integrated Development Program uh, Plan, KIDIP 2, in 2011 to 2020. These interventions contributed immensely to human security and promotion of conditions for recovery and development of Karamoja. The special programs projects included the Karamoja Livelihood Program, that is CARIP, Northern Uganda Social Action Fund, NUSAF 1, NUSAF 2, NUSAF 3, the Dryland Integrated Development Project, Development Initiative for Northern Uganda, DINU, and Peace Recovery and Development Program, PRDP, and also including the donor support. This created positive change in the social economic well-being of the people and reduced poverty index in Karamoja from over 80 percent before the summerment, 62 percent by 2017. 2017. The main objective of the MOU is to accord communities on the Uganda. Kenya sides of the border, opportunities for better cooperation, close coordination, and peaceful coexistence, as well as bridging isolation gaps to improve their livelihoods and social economic conditions for sustainable peace and development. Increase non-violent inter-ethnic interactions and co co collaborations. Two, reduce tensions and competition over access to resources such as water and pasture. Eliminate illegal flow of small arms and light weapons to the region. Empower local and county governments to prevent conflict. Develop rapid response mechanisms and promote sustainable peace. Five, strengthen peace building, community resilience, and the conflict prevention, management, and resolution initiatives. Six, increase cross-border trade and investment. Seven, strengthen surveillance and response to cross-border livestock human disease and improved environmental and national resource management. Strengthen elimination of harmful practices such as FGM, Nine, improve livelihoods, food security, nutrition, and support basic social services. Ten, improve infrastructure to facilitate cross-border movement of persons and animals and goods. Eleven, establish effective cross-border coordination mechanism. And twelve, enhance research, knowledge, and technology management, monitoring, and evaluation and communication on both sides of the border, opportunities for better cooperation and peaceful coexistence, as well as bridging isolation gaps to improve their livelihood and socioeconomic conditions. We have got the outputs out of this. Output number one is strengthen the joint mechanisms for cross-border peace building, community resilience, and conflict prevention and management and resolution. Output two, it is strengthen evidence-based regional collaboration, cross-border cooperation, and harmonization of policies and programs for peace and security in the Karamoja, Karamoja cross-border areas. Output three is to enhance investments and access to social services in the Karamoja, Karamoja cross-border area with a focus of on children, youth, and women. Output four, increased collaboration in sustainable environment and utilization of shared natural resources. And output five is diversified livelihoods, improved community security, resilience to natural and man-made shocks, and, enhance, and enhanced use 
of shared natural resources. I will also talk about how is it going to be funded, this program. It's a huge program. The two governments of Kenya and Uganda will be responsible for resource mobilization and ensure sustained political support for the project. The program will further leverage partnerships and resource mobilization from bilateral and, multina and multina multinational partners, international agencies, including the UN, IGAD, and NGOs.